Welcome to the Authentic Life Podcast. My name is Satwa and I'm here to help you seek, speak, and live your truth daily. This podcast is for the sincere spiritual seeker who is ready to explore the deeper, sometimes uncomfortable truths of their psyche and spirit without the spiritual bypassing. I'm here to empower you with the psychological teachings and spiritual insights to help you live your most authentic life. Warning, you will get triggered, you will feel uncomfortable, you will be challenged, and that, Seeker, is where your journey begins. I'm so excited to share this space with you. Thanks for pressing play. Let's begin. Hello, welcome back, Seeker. Today I'm going to talk to you about spiritual materialism which is such an important topic to understand when we're on the path because spiritual materialism, as you'll learn, is a huge hindrance to our growth and to our relationship with spirituality. Similar to what happens with spiritual bypassing, spiritual materialism is the ego's most favorite way to hijack our spiritual practice. And as you know, I'm really passionate about debunking New Age trends and and the New Age industry in general, which once you understand spiritual materialism and how it works, you'll see how the New Age industry reinforces it by using spiritual teachings, practices, beliefs, and so on. So without further ado, let's get into it. Spiritual materialism 101, that is the topic. So spiritual materialism is um, a term coined by Tibetan Buddhist master Chogyam Trungpa. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about what spiritual materialism is, um, what, uh, what it's not. So we're going to clarify a big misconception about it. And we're going to talk about some specific ways that new age Uh, reinforces um, spiritual materialism and how it holds us back and in some cases harms us um, and what we can do about it. So how can we move forward um, with our spiritual practice and uh, disentangle ourselves from this spiritual materialism because that also becomes part of our conditioning and um, our Uh, dogma, right? So spiritual materialism is described as the grasping, the uh, hankering, the clinging onto objects that are external to our being. And objects can be physical objects, tangible objects like, you know, this pen, um, or they can be intangible, uh, immaterial, uh, psychic objects such as our thoughts, our memories, our interpretations, our perceptions, moods, feelings, um, uh, desires, hopes, dreams, <laughs> and um, even sensations. So anything, anything that is sourced from the ego mind. So spiritual materialism describes the tendency for the ego to grasp and to cling on to um, these, these objects both in the material and in our psychic world. And why does the ego do this? Well, it uh, uses these objects to anchor itself to reality, to uh, remind itself that, yes, it's here, it's, it's alive, it's real, um, it matters, it's, um, it's important, you know, it's separate and so superior. So the ego uh, uses these as anger points because if all of the objects were to disappear, then it would be emptiness, it would be nothingness, and the ego is deathly afraid of this, right? That's like the ego death. So um, that is or what we what we know as the ego death. Very uh, misconstrued um, term or concept in New Age ego death, uh, which is a, a whole. It's a 
different thing that I will debunk. It's I, it's on my to debunk list. So on social media, I have these series um, of truth over trends where I debunk new age and uh, reveal the truth. So that is definitely on my list. Um, but anyway, it's so it's uh, it, it uses these objects to you know uh, anchor itself because it's afraid of this emptiness. So I want to just clarify one big misconception about spiritual um, materialism. And that's that um, materialism is not the way that we think about it in terms of uh, capitalism or, um, you know, consumerism, this, this notion of excess, um, this notion of, you know, the suggestion, suggestion of it being like, uh, uh, what's the word for vain or shallow or superficial, right? So that's not spiritual materialism. That is more of a philosophy and um, that describes, you know, capitalism. But um, just because you are materialistic, it does not mean that it, you're any less spiritual, right? So there's a big misconception um, that, you know, if you're spiritual, you are, uh, or if you're materialistic, or being materialistic is not spiritual, and that comes from like, that comes from religion and you know, um, cap or materialism being seen as a sin. Um, and again, that's just dogma, right? That's just dogma. That's not that's not true. You you don't. There's nothing that you can do or say or have or don't have that will make you any less more or less spiritual than you already are. And that's the truth. So just like you're human, nothing that you can do or say will make you any less or more human. Same with spirituality. So you know, and that I bring that up because that's kind of the main argument that New Age uses. Um, to defend themselves when they're called out on their materialism um, because they associate it with, you know, just their, their, their luxury. They feel attacked or they feel criticized um, and judged for being materialistic. And hey, you know, I'm no one to judge anyone for being materialistic. I'm hella materialistic. I mean, I grew up in LA. Like I have things. I have lots of things. I have an excess of things. And I notice how those things... Um, cause me suffering uh and it's it's such an integral part of my my conditioning that I don't even know how who I would be if I was not materialistic um I've had moments where I've been free of it um uh, but you know they're not they're not my reality and for for most of us in the West, you know, under capitalism, like we are, that is our conditioning. Materialism is our conditioning. So it's so hard. It's so hard to disentangle that us ourselves from it. It is so integral. So um, I can't, you know, we can't be judged for being materialistic. And that doesn't reflect, it's not a moral failure. And so um, that's not what spiritual uh, materialism is is about. Spiritual materialism is the pursuit of spirituality through this materialism. In other words, it's using spirituality, spiritual practices, spiritual teachings, spiritual tools, or yeah, spiritual insights, spiritual tools as using these as uh, tools to satisfy materialistic needs, desires, and dreams. Hello, manifestation. So it's using spiritual uh, tools and the spiritual practices as a means for, for material attainment. Um, and it's not just about the desire of having things. It's also the desire of having experiences that are materialistic. And I'll give you a very concrete example of that. So it's not just uh, the desiring to have things, but it's also desiring to have certain experiences, including the experience of spiritual fulfillment itself. So an example is if you are going to meditate and your goal for your meditation practice is um, to quiet the mind. 
the fact that you have this goal of quieting the mind is already in the territory of spiritual materialism. And that sounds counterintuitive, right? Because you're like, isn't that the practice? That is the practice. But when you make it a goal, you don't make it, a, when you make it your goal, it becomes about the goal and not the practice because of our biases and specifically the self-enhancement bias, which I talk about. So anything, so let's say you're sitting there and you, you go into your meditation and you're, you have this goal, right, of quieting the mind and you ha- you're not aware of the fact that the ego has entered and hijacked your practice. Um, so you start to create experiences like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's another bias that gets activated. You start to create or, you know, the mind, the ego starts to create for you experiences um, either through the body you know, as a sensation or thought or, th- or feelings or thoughts or visuals or whatever it is, whatever experience that it can do to convince you, yes, um, you are quieting me now. You are quieting the mind. See, it's working. It's working. You don't need to try anymore, right? And it's this incessant need to actually be um, just seen in a positive light that it's it makes it kind of funny. It's like so desperate to be seen in this for praise um, and to just do it right. And so, you know, you're sitting there, you're trying to quiet the mind. What you're doing is you're just enhancing the ego. You're just boosting the ego. You're giving the ego an anchor. That it anchors itself to that goal of I'm going to do a really great meditation practice. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it's, it, it pro- starts to project, you know, its experiences, whether those are, you know, just ideas that it's creating about what it feels, what the experience of quieting the mind, um, maybe you've maybe you've had an experience like that in the past, so it pulls out this pulls on this memory, uh, and try and hankers after recreating that memory, um, and it also does this through an identity as well. Um, for example, the higher self, right? That becomes a materialistic um, identity that the ego also anchors to and more subtle than that it's the witness the witness right the I've seen seekers like just their eyes glazed over and they're just like in this complete hypnotic state and they're like the witness is on you know it's like that it's just it's such a it's such a that's dogma that is dogma because that um, watcher in that moment becomes or the witness identity becomes the status quo. And in our practice, we're constantly trying to live up to that status quo and fulfill some expectation. Um, And it, you know, now instead of having an experience of reality as it is, we are having an experience with the identity we are having an experience with the status quo we're having an experience with the mind and then we're lost yeah we stop growing um and we we hypnotize ourselves and that's that's exactly what new age reinforces so i uh I wrote i wrote down in my notes here worshiping there's so much worshiping and new age um, of material things um, and and money. Yeah, there's like a lot of money worshipping, which is a thing, by the way. I just learned it. Money worshipping is a thing. And it um, it's not even like, it's not even that that itself is problematic. I mean, it is. It absolutely is. It's It has problems on its own, of its own. Um, but it's it's more i'm more concerned about unpacking um the way that or or not unpacking highlighting exposing the way that um it, you know the it's not even just giving the ego an opportunity 
to hijack our practice. It's giving the ego permission to do it. It's giving the ego a permission slip to say, yes, hijack the practice, do what you got to do, believe what you got to believe, even, you know, if it comes at the cost of complete delusion and self-hypnosis, um, here's your permission. And we, we actually say that to each other. Verbally, we give them permission. It's, you know, it, uh, the more I think about that, I mean, think about that for a moment. Perm- like, who gets to give anyone permission, permission to do anything? The only person that gets to uh, give permission, give you permission, or to grant permission, is a parent to a child or an adult to a child. Otherwise, it's like it's, it kind of creeps me out. Actually, what's what permit? Who who are you uh, to give me permission for anything? Um, what places you in that position? Yeah, that's a position of su- superiority, complete superiority. So it like weirds me out. And it's like, where is that permission being sourced? Like from some like warp, like place in your psyche that's like totally dissociated and it's just appealing to that part, that p- part of my psyche. And they're just like conspiring together to, <laughs> to create this like world that is just fluff like just just like smoke and mirrors so (laughs) it's creepy we hypnotize each other in this way we hypnotize ourselves and each other um and it's such a like it you know it's also a very seductive word right it's a very manipulative and seductive way to get us into buying shit and we're not just buying, um, you know, pretty crystals and trinkets and those cute little bells. We're buying into ideologies. We're buying into beliefs. We're buying into value systems. And we're buying into dogma. So super limiting to our freedom. Um So number two is that it links spirituality, spiritual materialism links spirituality with materialism, meaning it draws some causal link between your level of spirituality or level of consciousness or level of awakening. It draws a causal conclusion that the more spiritual you are, the 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 uh the more you'll get what you deserve so the more spiritual you are the more likely you are to thrive to have things to have successful relationships and seven figure incomes um and it makes this it maybe it doesn't explicitly they don't explicitly say that but it's implied and again, it's the sense of superiority, you know, like, oh, look, look how spiritual I am, that God has rewarded me, that the universe has rewarded me. Is that really how God works? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think God works like that. I don't think you get rewarded for being spiritual. Um yeah. It's like, I don't know exactly how God works, <laughs> but I don't think it's that, you know? Um, so they they make this false claim, this false conclusion, and we believe it because we uh, hear it so much. You know, this is the illusory truth effect where we, when we, the more we hear something, the more we believe it to be truth. So, you know, we we hear it, they say it, we say it to each other, we say it to ourselves, and the more we say it, the more it becomes the truth. Except it's not the truth. It's just our interpretation of reality that we are projecting out as a truth. 
And we become so convinced of this truth and so attached to it that we ignore and bypass every other evidence that suggests otherwise. Again, it's that self-hypnosis. And I just want to point out that whatever benefit that we get from our spiritual practice or spirituality, you know, whether that's um, something personal like our, or intrapersonal, like our uh, inner peace, you know, better sleep, um, creative flow, or if it's um, outward and material, like a healthy relationship, um, a thriving business, whatever benefit that we get is a byproduct. It's an outcome of our spiritual practice and not the cause of it. It's not because we have such a you know great relationship with the divine and we were so spiritual that we're being rewarded in fact it's it's that you know and yeah of course like uh people who are happier um happier people and people who have more inner peace tend to do better (laughs) tend to be more successful and have a higher quality of life and research has shown that and that makes sense um, and it's such a false uh, conclusion to make that it's because they, it's because of their spirituality that they reach this point. In fact, people can reach that point um, without any uh, rituals or, or practices. Um, so, and people can also be successful when they don't believe in anything. Um, I know plenty of very successful business owners who have no relationship with spirituality and they're you know they're like nihilistic (laughs) even so you know we don't think about that we don't think about all the people who like just I mean Jeff Bezos like I don't know if he's spiritual or not or what his beliefs are we don't hear about that because it's irrelevant it doesn't stop him, doesn't change anything about him being, you know, a very successful billionaire. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's not a matter of how spiritual you are or how connected you are to the divine. There's so many other factors. There's a lot of other factors there. And to ignore any of those factors is bypassing. It's not seeing uh, reality for what it is and it's drawing very false conclusions and very uh childish ones you know look i'm being rewarded because i'm such a good spiritual person hmm uh no i'm sorry no that that's just not that's just not how it works um and you know we're really limiting ourselves with that narrative uh, because that that narrative only makes us only confirms um, the fact that we are somehow separate and superior from everyone else, and um, we don't get to experience the beauty of interdependence, and we don't spiritually evolve, we don't develop self mastery skills, and you know what? It's okay. That's okay. You know, I I don't believe that um, everybody needs to be on the spiritual path. I mean, I, I believe that everyone is on the spiritual path. We are all spiritual beings. We can certainly deepen our relationship with spirituality if we choose to, or we cannot. We don't have to. Um, not everybody is meant to uh, you know, evolve, consciously evolve, even though that's such bogus phrasing because we're evolving every single moment so who like there's no uh you know i don't believe in this like these stages of evolution or or these levels of it like how who gets to determine i'm i don't even know like am i even like i i think i'm the most evolved that i i will ever be in this moment (laughs) you know and every moment creates um uh, 
everything that happens has already happened so I've already evolved and so it doesn't really matter like all of these ways of conceptualizing it really just it entraps us um, and um, it's irrelevant because we're we are always evolving and it's the way that we choose to move through life um, that that matters and the, the experiences that we create out of that 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 matter the experiences, the relationships, um, including the relationship with the with the divine. So all this to say, we should never look down on someone for choosing uh, or not being able to, you know, invest time and energy into their spiritual practice, into their seekerhood. Um, not everyone is gonna experience whatever we project our idea of spiritual attainment or spiritual enlightenment in this lifetime and that's okay so that's not the problem that's not that's not the issue here the the problem is when we new age um uh hip through this hypnosis that's happening um they you know make uh claims about their spiritual practice, they make claims that they haven't attained some enlightened state or some awakened um, consciousness through their spiritual practice. And they charge people lots and lots of money to teach them how to do the same. And it's like, what are we actually learning from that? We're learning spiritual materialism, new age spirituality, teaches spiritual materialism and they teach all the skills related to spiritual materialism so you can get really really good at it such as you know how to how to uh, spiritually bypass all the different techniques and thought loops that you can use to dissociate yourself from reality um, how to strengthen the sp- super ego um, you know, I was I was talking to my f- a friend, and she made the comment like she was like, I don't understand how people can teach something when they're not embodied in it. And I was like, they are embodied in it. They're embodied in spiritual bypassing. They're embodied in spiritual materialism, and that's those are the skills that they're actually teaching. So when you think about it that way, you're like, holy shit, what am I actually reinforcing here? Because they're all there. All those biases are there, and you're be- essentially practicing them. So instead of practicing the spiritual practice, you're practicing the ego and you're just boosting the ego and and paying someone lots and lots of money to to teach you how to do it, to separate yourself from yourself and from reality. Um, Again, it's nuts. So uh, the last thing I'll have to say about this, I have a lot more to say about this, but you know, I got to like keep it to a minimum um, because then it's just going to take too long. I can't, I don't want to make you suffer through two hours of my ranting on new age. So the third thing I have here is it's repackaged capitalism, patriarchy, white supremacy masquerading itself as spiritual enlightenment. And there's more I can expand on that. But I think that statement kind of stands on its own, that um, this is just another industry, um, you know, that's like the brainchild of capitalism. And um, we buy into all of it uh, when we reinforce these, um, these delusions, these na- false narratives, um, and these beliefs so um yeah how do we move out of that how do we move through uh, through materialism well i have three tips here for you and the first one is to keep the spiritual practice as the spiritual practice and that is really about cultivating the witness mind not the witness identity (laughs) but the witness mind so meditation, you know, this is this is a great tool for learning how to do that, um, how to 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 identify or note um, the ego and the mind 
through the witness, but through cultivating the witness mind. But the, the practice is not just limited to our meditation. And how do we apply it to the real world? Well, we start to notice how does spiritual materialism manifest in our consciousness? How does it show up? How does it show up in our thoughts, in our moods, in our actions? How does it show up in the way that we relate to people, to ourselves? How does it show up um, in our spiritual practice when we are, or, or how, let me rephrase this, how do we experience our spiritual practice when materialism is active when we are in materialism and how do we experience our spirituality when materialism is absent how do we experience ourselves when materialism is present how do we experience ourselves when materialism is absent and pay attention to your body get familiar with the 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 feeling and the experience of materialism get really 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 into it in, intimate with materialism and how it shows up um, because it shows up I mean it's part of our it's it's part of the conditioning around this the second point I have here is to practice uh, presence and when I say presence what I mean, and um, this is another one in New Age that gets so misconstrued, and it's also on my to debunk list. Um, the power of now, yeah, it's uh, it's such a when people say presence, they can mean different things. So um, I think it it's important to clarify what you mean by presence and what I the way I use uh, presence, which. It comes from Zen and also Tantra, is the awareness of reality exactly as it is, moment by moment. And that includes interpretations, thoughts, judgments. It also includes thoughts about the past, about the future. All of it belongs. Anything that arises spontaneously out of the present moment belongs in your full uh, attention to the the entirety of your experience of the present moment the the point is not to get lost in any of them but to have awareness and it's just through this awareness that we build the self mastery because once you become aware of reality exactly as it is and including any resistance that you might have to that everything as soon as you turn that light of awareness on that is the practice of self mastery you're building that skill of self mastery and that's the beauty of it it's so simple just this awareness and um, yeah, I just wrote. I just write. I wrote down here that um, re we we see reality exactly as it is, and we see ourselves exactly as we are. So the third point that I have here is to focus on your spiritual growth and make your spiritual growth the top priority for your practice growth if you have to make anything a goal but I hesitate to say that because you know the mind is so cunning that once you have the goal of not having a goal then that becomes a goal itself <laughs> right you see so you know the 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 dropping the goals and dropping the desires and dropping the expectations is um, it's only another form of uh, trying to attain a certain state, uh, the state of being without goals and desires and expectations. But you see how then that becomes a, an opportunity now for the ego to uh, create that experience. So um, uh, just, you know, just focus on your growth. Make spiritual growth your top priority. 
All right, beloveds, I'm going to um, end it here with, with one passage, a small passage from Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism by Chogyam Trungpa. And I have here in my notes, manifesting your desires is not a reflection of Buddhahood, it's a reflection of egohood. Ego is able to convert everything to its own use, even spirituality. For example, if you have learned of a particular beneficial meditation technique of spiritual practice, then ego's attitude is first to regard it as an object of fascination and second to examine it. Finally, since the ego is seeming solid and cannot really absorb anything, it can only mimic. Thus, ego tries to examine and imitate the practice of meditation and meditative way of life. When we have learned all the tricks and answers of the spiritual game, we automatically try to imitate spirituality since real involvement would require the complete elimination of ego. And actually, the last thing we want to do is give up the ego completely. However, we cannot experience that which we are trying to imitate. We can only find some area within the bounds of ego that seems to be the same thing. Ego translates everything in terms of its own state of health, its own inherent qualities. It feels a sense of great accomplishment and excitement at having been able to create such a pattern. At last, it has created a tangible accomplishment, a confirmation of its own individuality. If we become successful at maintaining our self-consciousness through spiritual techniques, aka if we become successful at spiritual materialism, if we get really, really good at it, then genuine spiritual development is highly unlikely. Our mental habits become so strong as to be, as to be hard to penetrate. We may even go so far as to achieve the total demonic state of complete egohood. And that is the spiritual ego. All right, beloveds. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and learning about this. I think this was a very nice overview for us to continue our inquiry, our learning, and our journey together through the world of spiritual materialism. So, um, yeah, just pay attention to um, in what ways your 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 spiritual materialism is uh, being hijacked and um, being you know seduced by um, by new age spirituality. That's what I want for you the most is to um, notice that and and choose not to participate in it um, if your self-mastery and your depth of your spiritual relationship, or your relationship with spirituality with the divine is important to you. If that's something that you value and is important to you. And okay, and it's again, it's okay. Absolutely okay if it's not. But um, be clear about it and honest with yourself. I would love to hear your experience of spiritual materialism and how you got tangled up in it um, and seduced by it and how you found your way out. I'd love to hear your story. Um, if you have any other questions or if you have any suggestions for any topics that you'd like for me to cover on this podcast or any guests that you'd like me to bring on. I'm going to start bringing on guests in the near future. Um, just shoot me an email. at uh, I'm at seekingwithsattva at gmail.com. If you like this podcast episode, just want to remind you to please subscribe and share it with a fellow seeker. And if you post it on social media, please don't forget to tag me at seekingwithsattva.
Till next time. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Authentic Life Podcast. If you liked this episode, please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends on social media. Just don't forget to tag me at Seeking with Satwa on Instagram. Seeking with Satwa is an international spiritual development brand that has helped thousands of seekers heal, grow, and consciously evolve on their journeys. To learn more about my work, to sign up for my Authentic Life newsletter, to read my blog posts, or to work with me one-on-one, visit my website at seekingwithsatwa.com. Stay tuned for some exciting new updates, offerings, and guest speakers coming your way soon. Until next time, keep going, keep growing, keep seeking and speaking your truth so that you can finally live an authentic life. Oh,